here. Welcome to this next episode of Critter Conversations. This week, we will be exploring a new animal that's really cool. And we'll be learning about more about the journeys of Paul as he spread the gospel. Are you ready? Let's stand up and sing a song together. Oh yeah. Come on, put those hands together. Hey, Maddie, uh, what are you doing there, buddy? Oh, hey, Jungle Jim. I didn't realize you were there. I've just been studying on, up on our Critter of the Week, and I really wanted to get into their head, you know, like, understand what they feel like, what they think, why they do what they do, how they roll. Okay, well, that's not exactly our Critter of the Week, but I appreciate the dedication. Thanks, dude. No better way to understand the Critters than to become. Uh, hey guys, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but our audience is here. Oh. It's time to start the show. Uh, oh dude, I didn't even realize. I've been so focused on the Critter of the Week, I just didn't even notice. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Critter Conversations, the very serious show where we have very serious conversations about very serious critters. <laughs> Good cover. <laughs> Why don't you tell us what our critter is today? For sure, our critter for the week is the salmon. Um, that's clearly a rainbow trout, but close. Okay, let me try again. Ta-da! Well, that 
that's a salmon, but it's the smallest one I've ever seen. Hmm. Normally, uh, they're about uh, this big. Okay, now, why don't you fill us in on why you're hopping backwards? Well, why don't we go to where the salmon are, and we can see for ourselves. Check this out! Cool! So the salmon is known for swimming upstream in rivers. Swimming upstream is very difficult. These salmon aren't taking the easy way when they swim upstream. Yeah, salmon are really cool because most fish are either saltwater fish, which means they live in oceans, or they're freshwater fish, which means they live in rivers and streams. But salmon are anadromous, which means that they are hatched in fresh water, then they migrate to the oceans but return to fresh water to lay their own eggs. So they can be in fresh water or salt water. Say that word again? What word? Anacanadia. Antarctica. You mean anadromous? I cannot say that. <laughs> Do you know what? I was hiking in Alaska and we saw an awesome waterfall and a beautiful mountain stream. And I saw hundreds of salmon swimming upstream to lay their eggs. The water was super shallow and I reached down and picked one up with my hands. That is why bears eat salmon. Since they are swimming upstream, it's hard for it's hard work and slow slow going. So the bears can reach in and bam, snack. That's right. <laughs> Salmon are going the opposite direction of what we would expect them to do, which actually reminds me of our Bible story today. Today we're going to see that Paul wasn't afraid of the hard situations that come with following God. He knew God would take care of him even in the midst of trials. Let's head back to the studio and review our big picture question. Hey, do you remember that big word from last week? Sure do! It's commodification. No. Spazalification. <laughs> Not quite. It's sanctification. Let's just say it slowly real quick. Sanctification. We're going to talk a little bit more about it today. So what is sanctification again? Well, Maddie, that's our big picture question. What is sanctification? Sanctification is the process of becoming more like Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. A process means that it doesn't all happen at once, right? Exactly. As we learn more about Jesus and continue to study the Bible, we understand how we can become more like Christ. We learn and then we put it into the action. Okay, last week we focused on Paul's third missionary journey. Yeah, Paul traveled from Athens to Corinth, and while he was there, he met Aquila and Priscilla. While he was in Corinth, Paul spent time teaching people that Jesus is the Messiah. From Corinth, he traveled to Ephesus and visited churches all throughout Asia. While Paul was in Corinth, he met with a group of people to have the Lord's Supper. While Paul was teaching, a young man named Eutychus fell asleep and fell out of the window three stories down. Oh, you know he's dead. <laughs> Eutychus was dead, but Paul put his arms around him and Eutychus came back to life. Like a resurrection hug! Um, yeah. Yep. And then Paul traveled back towards Ephesus, but he didn't stop there. He felt the spirit tell him to sail to Jerusalem, even though it could be very dangerous. Again this week, we see that Paul used every opportunity to tell people about Jesus. And today, we're going to learn about Paul's time in Jerusalem. Ooh, danger. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Let's watch our story video now. The Apostle Paul told people the good news about Jesus wherever he went. When he returned to Jerusalem, the believers were glad to see him. But many Jews did not like that Paul taught people they don't have to follow Jewish laws to be saved. So these Jews <laughs> made a plan to stop Paul. Paul was at the temple when a crowd of people dragged him away and tried to kill him. But a Roman official came and stopped them. The official arrested Paul and brought him to the Sanhedrin, a powerful group of Jewish priests and other leaders. Their job was to decide if a person had broken a Jewish law, and if so, to decide how that person should be punished. 
Paul stood in front of the Sanhedrin and looked the men in the eyes. Friends, he said, I have done what God wants me to do. I do not believe I have done anything wrong. Paul explained that he had been arrested because he taught that Jesus' resurrection gave hope that we all can be resurrected. The men in the Sanhedrin began arguing. Some of them thought dead people would be resurrected at the end of time, and others thought that would not happen. The Roman soldiers took Paul away to keep him safe. The next night, the Lord stood by Paul and gave him an incredible message. Have courage, he said. You told about me in Jerusalem. I want you to tell about me in Rome too. In the morning, a group of Jews got together and made a plan to kill Paul. They promised to not eat or drink until Paul was dead. These men told the Jewish leaders about their plan. Paul's nephew overheard this evil plan. He hurried to tell Paul what was going on. Paul told his nephew to report it to the commander. The army commander said, don't tell anyone that you told me about this plan. Then the commander told two of his officers to get together a large group of soldiers and horses. They brought a horse for Paul to ride on. And that night, the soldiers took Paul to Caesarea to see the governor. Even when others threatened his life, Paul continued to obey Jesus. He believed that God, who showed his love for the world by sending his son to die on the cross and rise again, would help him through hard times. We too can risk everything to share the gospel with courage because we know that God loves us and will care for us. Wow, Paul knew that going to Jerusalem would bring trials, but still he was obedient to God. Paul knew God had asked him to share the good news about Jesus with the people of Jerusalem. Yeah, even when other dudes threatened his life, Paul continued to obey Jesus. He believed that God, who showed his love for the world by sending his son to die on the cross and rise again, would help him through hard times. That helps us to know that we can risk everything to share the gospel with courage, because we know that God loves us and will take care of us. Like gospel superheroes. Sharing the gospel. Despite persecution. <laughs> yeah. Paul showed us that he had the courage to do what God told him to, and faith that God would take care of him no matter what. I, and you guys, and even you guys can have that same courage and faith. So, let's all review how this reminds us of, of our story. Salmon swim upstream. That is re a really difficult journey, but they know they, can, they have to make it. Paul made the difficult journey to Jerusalem because he knew it was God's will for him. We can follow God anywhere he leads, even if it is difficult, because we know he will always be with us and protect us. Yes! Man, what a great encouragement as we head out into a new week. Thanks for joining us today, kids. Be sure to tune in next time for more... Critter Conversations! Later, dudes. Is it time for my nap yet? Have all of our adventures worn you out? Yeah, dude. I'm toast. Well, let's thank the kids first for being here, and then you can go nap. Thanks, kids, for joining us today for Rev and our Critter Conversations. We hope that you had a great time and that you'll mention our time together in your conversations this week. Have a great week. Okay, let's go get you some rest, Maddie. Buenas noches, amigos.